This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. Holy shit, it's been two weeks! Ugh! I hate having the two-week breaks. Oh, my God. Oh, so I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everybody. Yes. <laughs> For those of you who cannot get enough of her voice on What the Fuck or on Nerd to the Third, she's here again this week. <laughs> yes. Oh, two weeks. Uh, we didn't have one last week, and that one was actually planned because my cousin got married last week. Um... Of course, I had to be there, help with some tech stuff, because her brother is currently, I think he's currently in Fort Knox right now. He couldn't make it for the wedding. And so he just, we hooked up Skype, got everything going there, and he was able to see the wedding through Skype. And I swear, everybody just, they came by, passed by, said hello to him. It, it, it's like people going up to an offering plate and just putting something in the bin. <laughs> Except for this one girl. This one girl just, like, hogged the computer the whole time. I'm like, yeah, I think, I think... They're, they're really close in some way, shape, or form. I'm not going to say she's got the hots for him, but <laughs> she probably does. Ah, but that's okay. Oh, uh, and, then, and then the week before, we just had scheduling fuck-ups and everything, and it was just, ah! It's a pain in the ass, I tell ya. But hopefully, Wait, what was it like? What was it like? It was just, ah! Well, that's not ah! the sound you made before. Yeah, ah! Ah! Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do two different things depending on how I want to control my volume. Because uh, sometimes I, I do the Port Charlie podcast usually at night when there's not a lot of people here, and sometimes my brain will click to that to that mode for a moment, and it's like no, it's it's the middle of the day. Everybody else is gone. That would be interrupting the recording, and so yeah, my 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 brain had a short circuit. <laughs> oh, so uh, how how is your two weeks, Cat? Um, they've been good. I've been really busy. I started a new job at work and, uh, like this last week was just really rough. So I've just been really tired. Yeah. Uh, at, at least you're able to get a, a nine to five or job as, as, or a day job or whatever. I'm, I, I admit I am still bitter that I'm not able to find like day, t day work or whatever. But, you know, I, I keep trying. I keep plugging away. And I know I'm not the only one out there who's like that. Uh, so uh, for everybody who is in my position, I'm with you, brothers and sisters. Thump, thump. <laughs> <laughs> that anybody could – yeah, there you go. <laughs> Didn't know if people could hear it on my end, but mm. – oh, so uh, so two weeks. And interestingly enough, I have only one shout-out. I've been holding on to this shout-out for the next two – for the past two weeks – uh, this is a group of Let's Players, well, they're currently Let's Playing uh, some, I think, uh, all of the Zelda games. They started with the original, and now they're up to, uh, they're doing three of them at a time. Um, I think right now they're on Oracle of Seasons during the week, and then Majora's Mask, and I want to say Wind Waker HD on the weekends. And this group is called the D-Pad, if you can find them at youtube.com slash downrightpad. And check them out. They're really interesting. It's kind of like they, they're they're kind of like Game Grumps, except exclusively with Zelda. <laughs> and there's sometimes more than two. Like there was one. There was like five people on like several videos at once, and it was it was it got crazy. Uh, and I found them actually through Reddit since I've been putting up my uh, Pokemon Quartz run on Reddit just to get some extra feedback or what have you. And I found those guys. Found a couple of other guys that honestly aren't worth mentioning because they're kind of not so memorable unfortunately so um but the, but the last one i do remember seeing on reddit and i guess because this guy can count as a second shout out or whatever he's doing a randomizer nuzlocke for pokemon fire red for those who don't know uh you you get the pokemon fire red rom you download it you put the you plug it into a randomizer that creates a whole new game for you then you plug that into the emulator and then beyond that you not only have the random Pokemon coming at whatever time and place and space and everything, but if your Pokemon faints, it's considered dead, and you have to get rid of it or put it in the PC or whatever. It's really, really tough. So, And, and then this guy is doing that. I don't remember the guy's username, but um, I do remember that he's Scottish. 
that's the only thing I can remember about him. Uh, otherwise, you know, it, and it seemed like he was just starting out, so. Um, but yeah, and I'm going to assume over the whole two weeks, you do not have a shout out, do you? That would be correct. I never, ever have shout outs. <laughs> except, except for the times when you do and you surprise me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably happened, what, twice in how long? I know, right? <laughs> Oh, one of these weeks that's gonna happen again. It's just I'm gonna be like, oh, you don't have one, and like, be like, yeah, I do. be like, bitch, please. <laughs> yes. And uh, speaking of Zelda games, though, I'm actually gonna be starting, you know, as a kind of a palate cleanser or side thing or whatever. I'm debating between A Link to the Past and Majora's Mask for my for, my, for my next Zelda run. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Majora's Mask the one that had the really amazing creepy pasta? Yes. Three okay, days. that's all I know about Majora's Mask <laughs> is the creepy pasta. Yeah, three days, moon falls on you, so you have to play with time. Yay! A lot of time travel. I'm <laughs> um, actually going through it right, right now, just on the off time, just to get myself a real feel for it. So, uh, and and I'm doing okay. I've had to consult a guide a, a, a few times, but otherwise, I'm doing okay. Oh. So yeah, um, I, th I think I don't think there's much else to talk about before before going into the news, is there? Nope. So let's just get right into it. Uh, a couple of these I've been holding on to for for the past couple of weeks. A lot of them are brand spanking new, <laughs> uh, like this one up here. I was holding on to for a couple of weeks, and I believe, uh, yeah, you want to go ahead and take your shot because this one's out of Florida. Hmm. A Coral Springs teacher is facing battery charges after allegedly making a student unclog a urinal with his bare hands, police said. Jennifer King Forshee, Forshe, 58, of Hollywood, is accused of ordering a 10-year-old to remove wet wads of paper towels from a urinal in a boys' restroom at Broward County Community Charter School on February 6, according to the arrest report. Forshee was arrested Wednesday and charged with battery on a child by exposure to urine, records show. Okay. I'm 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 gonna say this right now. Is, is she wrong for making the boy do it with his bare hands? Yes, that's disgusting. That's that's gross. It's ugh, whatever you know. Should at least give the boy like some gloves or something to get the paper towel out without directly touching it. I can agree with that. What I don't agree with and what I don't understand is why it's considered battery. Because it's not like she was battering the boy and like smacking him at the back of the head while he was doing it. I would think, if anything else, child endangerment would be a better, you know, because it's dirty. It's you could be exposed to God knows what because you're touching body fluids. Mm -hmm. um, but battery, battery, I don't know. Maybe there's some legal jargon that explains why it's battery. Battery just seems kind of odd. Yeah, it's just that, that the the charge is just no, no. And. And, and and I can even look at it on a different angle and say, you know what? Little boys probably pee on themselves all the time. What's a little more urine? And to those people, I would say, no, there's a difference. When the little boys pee on their own hands, that's their own urine. They know where it's been. They don't know where the other shit has been. So – and there's no indication whether or not the paper towels in question were ones that this little boy had peed on. So you know, you don't know. You just do not have that. And, of course, the teacher, she told the police she saw nothing wrong with what she had done until she was arrested. So, yeah, you know, being put in handcuffs kind of, I guess, changed her mind really, really quickly. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't your mind change really quickly in that situation? Well, I don't know. Like, I think the fact that she didn't see anything wrong with, you know, exposing a child to another, you know, how many children's body fluids... <laughs> You're kind of dumb if you don't see why that's a problem. Exactly. So uh, hopefully, you know, now, now it says she didn't. She saw nothing wrong until she was arrested. So maybe, maybe there is a little bit of a hope spot. Maybe she'll have learned a lesson, and the next time she makes a kid clean out a toilet, she'll give them proper, proper things to use. Now I th it, think it, elsewhere in this article, I want to say he, he, yeah, he tried. He tried to use dry paper towels to pick them up, but the urine seeped through, unfortunately. And just, you know, you know, kudos to the kid for realizing, okay, this is some gross shit. I need something, and and just got some extra paper towels. 
they didn't work. But kudos to the kid for actually having a brain and, and doing something about it. And, and I think I railroaded you over there a minute there, Kat. <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't, the, the article doesn't really explain why the, uh, the teacher forced the kid to unclog the urinal. Yeah, it really doesn't. But I, I can make an, an educated guess is that the kid probably put them in there, clogged it up. Some other poor sap went in there and, and used it, told the teacher. Somehow the teacher found out it was this kid, and the kid's punishment was to clean it out. That that's, yeah. Keep in mind, that is my guess. That would be my guess, too. My guess would be that the kid put the paper towels there just to fuck with other kids and got caught. And she probably thought that that was the appropriate punishment, yeah. which obviously it's not, but, you know. Yeah. At least, at least not with your bare hands. Like I was saying, you know, put on some gloves, get something to grab it out if you must have the kid do it. You know, don't make him do it with his bare hands. That's just ugh. Oh, so <laughs> we leave Florida and we go out to Oklahoma where a man known as Dr. Mike in Edmond is being questioned by the community about the ingredients of what he calls a Jesus shot. A Jesus shot. <laughs> Yes, a shot of Jesus. <laughs> Liquefied Jesus right here for $200. Take one, it cures all your ails right here. And <laughs> the full name of Dr. Mike is John Michael Lundgren. And in 2005, he had his license to practice medicine revoked in Ohio, of all places, after he was convicted of eight felony counts of tax evasion, mail fraud, and health care fraud. After he was released from prison, Dr. Mike moved to Oklahoma, which granted him a license to practice medicine on a provisional supervised basis. According to News 9, the, the uh, local station that picked this up, Dr. Mike had been injecting local residents with something he calls the Jesus Shot, which allegedly cures all pain for life. If, if you... If you are... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if you are stupid enough... To not see that something that claims to cure all pain for life is a fraud, then, 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 then sorry, you need a good smack upside the head. You deserve to not be cured of anything. Yeah, it's just, sorry, that's one of those things. It's like there is no cure all for all pain in life. The only cure for pain in life is, well, it's, it's, it's death. It's yeah. death. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. It, 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 there's also the unfortunate implications on that one too. But yeah, it's just, just that's the only way you can really do it. Sorry, just you can't do that. And here's the really bad part: he's been charging 300 people per miracle injection. You guys are paying 300 dollars for for whatever he's injecting in you. We don't even know if it's safe. I, mean, I don't think it says anything about whether or not it's safe. I think they're just questioning the guy. Uh, let's see. Nobody knows anything about the guy, but he claims he's a former Special Forces doctor, and him and another Special Forces doctor developed a serum for the military called Jesus Juice, and has been used in the military for years, and it cures any ailment. I... That sounds so legit. I know, for right? For real. Let's see. And, and you know what's a good thing? This is on this show, because you and I are both military brats. Mm-hmm. And both of our parents, you know, uh, let's see, I don't think it says however many years, but I'm willing to bet if it's more than 20, then odds are we probably would have heard about it. Yeah. Not, okay, so special forces, you know, his miracle serum. Is he trying to pretend like he created Captain America or something? Yeah. <laughs> Like, seriously, like, it sounds like the plot of Captain America or something. Oh, God. He's trying, he's pretending like he can create superheroes with his special serum created for the military. I mean, like, that just smells of bullshit from 14 miles away. Mm hmm. It's just, and, and, of, and of course, people are buying it, both literally and figuratively. Welcome to the Midwest and the South. Yes, the South Midwest. Fucking Oklahoma. Where within five miles of going into Oklahoma, you see church advertisements and, and billboards. And I think I remember seeing one that kind of – I think it was Jerry Falwell or whoever was praising the fact that they had visited there. It was like, really? Really? Okay. Yeah, apparently nothing really happens in Oklahoma. 
at least not since 95. I work a convention down there. Otherwise, I would never, ever visit the state of Oklahoma on purpose. <laughs> yeah, the only times I've been through Oklahoma was when I was driving a truck. That's it. Other than that, I have no reason to go. Well, I may have one reason to go there. I do have a friend who lives there. But other than that, I have no reason to go there. I, I have a friend who lives there, and she's one of my absolute best friends in the entire world, and I still would not drive to Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, but uh, there's also another place I wouldn't go. Did you – this is, this wasn't in the news, but uh, I think it was – what was it? Uh, Capital City Con or, or someplace, the one in Austin that just recently like made a big – hubbub uh recently with their uh advertisement oh yeah i was supposed to i wanted to read about that and i didn't end up reading whatever article i had seen about it because i hear all of those kinds of convention uh scandals mm -hmm. for those who don't know uh i think it was at least one of the ways they were advertising it is um they had a really good close-up shot of power girl's breasts and I think the tagline was something like it, everything is – yes, everything is bigger here in Texas or something like that. And it's like, dude, I, I – this is coming from a guy who, who is, is probably more of a chivalrous pervert than anything else. Um, where that falls on that particular scale is – I guess it's left up to the viewer or the listener to decide a little bit better because I am shit at it. My point being, yes, I enjoy the, I enjoy the boob window, but – this is one of those cases where it really, you know, that that's not cool. You know what's sad is that I think it's kind of funny. Oh yeah? It's one of those it's one of those cases for me where I'm like if I were a dude, you know, I would find that that would be awesome. Yeah. You know, my my greater worry about it other than the major, you know, sexism is the copyright <laughs> infringement going on there. Yeah, because they they really probably don't have any uh, any rights to use Power Girls uh, her boobs <laughs> for no. for anything. So no, probably not. That would be more of my worry because the sexism, like, hey, you know what? It's it's been this way for a long time, and it's going to change slowly. But it it's going to change slow. Yeah, and there are there are people who just don't realize that if you actually consider women people, they might actually come to your convention. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and of course, these people they they don't get that, or or they just had very targeted advertising. Maybe they have another ad out there for the ladies to draw the ladies into the convention, but generally, yeah. probably not. Yeah, I would I want to see one where where they would have a close up on a guy's junk, and and say the same thing and see what happens. I, I, I just want to see the reaction to this. How many people are, would, would lose their shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. But, yeah. Speaking of Texas, I, I ended up getting a good segue. I didn't even realize it. Oh, this one is just sad. Uh, mother and father attending a birthday party for the one-year-old nephew were tased by Baytown, Texas officers for not leaving a parking lot that police cruisers had blocked in. They were tased for not leaving after, you know, after the police cruisers had blocked them in. Mm. Jody and Christopher White told KHOU that police were called to the party because of an altercation between some of the adults and attendants. They were trying to leave, but the parking lot had been barricaded by arriving police cruisers. When the police told the couple to leave, they pointed out they were unable to. There were police in the parking lot blocking it, so we couldn't move, Jody White said. Police allegedly repeated their request, and Jody White responded in a manner that she admitted was insulting. They just rushed my car and opened the door, and tasers were just everywhere. Yeah, because, you know, the, the proper response to, you know, to a, an insulting manner is to suddenly tase everybody in, 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 in a five-mile radius. And I just could not decide on a distance, but that's okay. A member of the family recorded the incident, and when police rushed White's car, multiple children can be heard in the background screaming. Oh, dear. Police claim that Jody White's husband, Christopher, who was seated in the car, nearly overpowered one of the officers. Naturally, he was also tased. Now, this this is the original one I found. I found another one that, that told a slightly different different story. I'm going to try and go by memory. I really should have put it in here. 
But they didn't say anything – the other article that I read didn't say anything about whether or not the police had barricaded them in or whether or not they were trying to leave but couldn't, if I remember correctly. It just goes to show double and triple check your news sources So, because you never know. One of them is going to be different from the other ones, and, I, and you know, just, it's just get all the information that you can. This one, if, if – if it is as accurate as it is portrayed here, or, or even if it's as accurate as it's portrayed over there, on the one hand, if they couldn't leave because of the police, then what the police should have done was moved their car so that those people could get out. I mean, granted, they probably could have just left on foot, but they were wanting to leave. They w didn't want to just leave their car behind, I'm sure. You know, They should not have had to leave their car behind, I don't think. Um, do you do you have anything about this, Kat? Um, it's really kind of hard to say with the conflicting reports. Um, it sounds like perhaps whatever the police wanted them to do, they they just didn't understand or it was made unclear. First off, if you fuck with a police officer, you should be prepared to get fucked with back. That's it's it's not right. Um, it shouldn't be that way, but if you are going to go in an aggressive situation, in a hostile situation, and be an asshole to an officer, mm -hmm. you are setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, which admittedly, as you said, it's not right, but it's the way it is. The, obviously, the cops, yeah, oh, you fucking pig, taste, 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 taste. No, that's not the way to do it. It, it shouldn't be, but, you know, it's... It's so hard to be, you know, in a moment in the in the heat with the adrenaline pumping and to make good decisions. And clearly nobody here made good decisions. No, the cops made no good decisions when people when they were wanting them to leave, couldn't you couldn't move, you know, they couldn't get out if they wanted to take their car. What were they supposed to do? Abandon their car? Well, maybe. Who knows? Well, that's that's assuming that the, the situation called for them to leave permanently, whereas maybe the police just wanted them on the other side of the barricade to get them out of the way. Now, that's also that's also another point. I didn't even think about that. And and maybe they just misunderstood and thought that, you know, that they should get their car and, and just leave. But why would – see, to me, it says that they weren't understanding what the police wanted because – the police probably don't want anybody to physically leave the scene because they need to question witnesses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Which, that does make sense, yeah. So, it, it, even still, the tasing, a little too far. <laughs> Tasing's a little bit far. Yeah, and even if even if the husband, you know, if, if, even if he, like, nearly overpowered one of the officers, what happened first? The tasing... The, the, the taser's going around or the guy trying to overpower the officer because, you know, fight or, f fight or flight instinct kicks in. You've got tasers going around. Your wife's being, you know, tased all to hell. You're, you know, you're in danger of being tased. What do you what is your first instinct? You know, and you can't run. So you may as well try and knock him down and stop him. Right. You know, regardless of what station in life he's at. So that, that that's more of a natural thing, if, if you know, if he felt he was in danger. And unfortunately, there are, there are police officers out there that you know their mere presence can cause people to feel like that they are in danger. Luckily, a lot of those people are smart enough to not do anything. You know, you know, do, don't throw the first punch. Basically, it, it would be my thing there. Yeah, if you end up throwing a punch, you probably are going to be taken down pretty hard, but. At least you can't say, nope, I did not start it. But then, of course, the police can lie and say, no, he totally started it. Well, apparently they caught the whole thing on video, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've heard a lot of instances lately where the cops have lied, and, you know, people's home security videos or the dash cam videos have proven that the cops were lying. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, like, people are getting out of prison time and, and all that other stuff. So it's kind of crazy nowadays. Oh yeah, I think there's one. I know there's one precinct over in California that has started to do the police, the uh, police cameras, like on the actual officers. Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard something about that. And it's like, yes, we need more of that, because I've I've heard enough over the past few years. Thank you, Josh Hadley, and Hart Fisher, <laughs> to to know that you know there are a lot of officers out there that are against this. 
And the ones that are against this are most likely, I, I think, most likely are the crooked ones, the ones that don't want to be on camera, that, that are saying, oh, we have privacy, we shouldn't have to be filmed while we're on duty. Fuck you, yes, you do. You know what? If, if, if some, some grease monkey at a garage can be on the camera while he's working on your car, then guess what? You as an officer should be able to be on camera while doing your job. Okay? That's, that's all there is to it. You know, and you know what? Guess what? It also, as I think one of them pointed out, it protects you as an officer. If you really aren't doing anything wrong and somebody is trying to fuck you over, you can whip out the video proof here. This is the proof. This fucker is lying. I think I think it's it's probably not that simple for the officers because I think I mean if television has proven anything to me um then I think a lot of cops probably have to bend the law a little bit in order to to get things done. It's sort of like the uh I hate to say this but it's sort of like the the pro side of torturing prisoners to get information. Mm -hmm. You sometimes you have to do uh, a little sin for the greater good. Yeah, that is... That is and so th I can see how the cops wouldn't want to be on camera so that they can bend the law a little bit in order to get, you know, something that they need to happen. Um, and, and that, of course, is why we have so many officers who, you know, take advantage of their position of power and beat people unnecessarily and arrest people unnecessarily and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's 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 good and bad. Um, we'll see if it happens because it really might be considered unconstitutional. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. In a way, I kind of hope not because then it's like, you know, I would rather have the cameras there, and you know, for a cop to just blatantly on camera bend the law and and be like, look, here's what I did. This is my proof that I did it. I understand. I take responsibility for it, but it was also in the name of doing this as well. You know, I would rather but a cop see, do that, and I don't know if that would be admissible in court, though. Ooh. See, yeah, the problem is going to be that now you're going to have lawsuits every five seconds with people saying, "Well, we have to see all the video from the arrest," and "Ooh, look at this thing here. This is this, and this, and this." And now I think court cases are going to be even longer, and and more of them, and probably more expensive. <clears throat> just because now there's additional information for people to go over, not to mention the cost of the cameras themselves, which isn't just like, oh, here's a camera. It's also storing the data and ensuring the privacy of that data. It's a lot of money in the end. This is true. Oh, this is, it's, it's yeah, obviously it's got its good and bad points. It's got to be some kind of legal middle ground or something that, can work out to where it works out to the best for everybody. I like to think there is, but um, apparently I was not on the road there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but um, but yeah. Speaking of lawsuits, oh, Colorado, hi, you are you are weed country. Well, one of the two weed weed country states. I want to. Hey, be they in have you. really good skiing in Colorado too. Do you think people ski in Colorado while high? Uh, um. I've heard of people doing it in Missouri. Oh, God. So surely in Colorado, because we've got one place to ski in this state. So surely a place that has a veil with rich people who can buy all the drugs they could ever want probably has people doing drugs on the slopes. Probably. <laughs> Not only buying the drugs, buying the lawyers to get them off the drug charges. Oh, <laughs> and probably buying the judges, too. <clears throat> Oh, so uh, anyway, in Broomfield, Colorado, a man who was saved in dramatic fashion during the state's historic flooding last September is filing a lawsuit claiming that the emergency responders didn't rescue him fast enough. Are you fucking serious? Really? 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 Roy Ortiz told the, the news station that despite having already saved his wife and brother, rescue crews didn't realize he was trapped inside his upside-down car. I started yelling again, and I started making noise to let them know, those people, that I'm alive, he said. The lawsuit claims that the rescue workers ignored pleas from his wife and brother that there were that was another person in the car. Ortiz had jumped into the back seat of the overturned vehicle to prevent himself from drowning, and it took his rescuers two hours to locate, then ex extricate him. He told CBS4, the news station, that he needs help paying his medical bills, and suing those who saved him is his only option. 
His lawyer said that it is unfortunate to try to have to try and cast liability and responsibility for this act of God on the men and women who risk their own lives, but that Ortiz has no choice. As for the party being sued, the North Metro Fire Department, they certainly sympathize with what Ms. Ortiz had to go through, according to spokeswoman Sarah Ferris. I'm sure it was traumatic, a traumatic experience for him. Ultimately, we were just very grateful we were able to save his life that day. Now, there's nothing from the fire department side saying whether or not you know, they did ignore him. If they were doing their jobs, like I'm going to assume that they were, they probably did. He, the guy, the 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 the, uh, the guy suing them, he's probably exaggerating a little bit here, because mm. if you're saving some two people from a car, that is, let's see, uh, from what I'm guessing from here was sinking. You know, it wasn't already sunk. Obviously, they could see or hear him. And he was he was able to climb into the back and, and start moving around and getting attention. I don't think it would have taken them two hours to find him. You know, I, I, I think the guy he is exaggerating. They may not have found him right away. That that I could believe. You know, they may they may have pulled them out and then they were like, Oh shit, you know, husband's still in there. Okay, let's get over there. But I don't think it took two hours. That, and it's not like, I mean, we don't know exactly how it went down, but it's not like extricating people from overturned vehicles is an easy, safe process that you can do in, like, a snap. Right. It it takes time to, to do it delicately so you don't hurt the person that you're trying to save. So, of course, it's going to take time. Yeah. You know, and, and, and even if it was the two hours thing, he obviously survived. He was obviously, okay, still in danger, but physically he was alive. So, you know, it wasn't that much it – was, it was still a, a risk, but it still wasn't so much of a risk that, you know, he had serious injury from it. You know, okay, oh, well, he had medical bills. They, he probably got checked out, maybe got treated, maybe for hypothermia, who knows. But that, that seemed – I'm guessing, by the way, that may have been the extent of it. But, but still, it's like really wow. That, 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 it, this whole thing just makes him – seem like a dick you know yeah i mean he probably does have legitimate concerns and you know it's like we said with the last one it's, when you're in the heat of the moment you know it's really hard to understand what's going on so he's talking about how his wife and brother were were saying that there was another person in the car and that the workers ignored them which i very much doubt happened yeah um because, you know, in the heat of the moment, they're trying to focus on the people that they've got and they're not going to be saying every single thing that they're doing like, oh, we understand what's going on. We're going to help your so and so. They're doing everything in their own process because they're not panicking because it's their job not to panic. Whereas the average everyday citizen who almost just drowned is probably panicking and isn't fully aware of everything that's going on in the situation. Right. It's just, you know, mm. Uh, I can't really. Yeah, the guy's exaggerating a little bit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that he had to go through this. I'm glad he's okay. But dude, cool your tits. I mean, there's got to be somebody else if you have to sue. I mean, there's got to be somebody else you can sue. Yeah, don't sue these guys. They were doing their jobs. And I they mean, did it well they could have let you. you fucking die. Just think about that. Yeah, they could have. You just Very think about well. the next time you're in a situation. If you if you're that guy who sues them um, for saving your life, think about the next time you need them to save your life, mm -hmm. or the next time you need them to save your family's life. If they're in a car accident or they have a house fire or something, you think that's going to endear them to you at all? Nope, not at all. Oh, uh, so the last last news story we've got. It's actually. It's one I – it's written and presented in a way I've never seen done before. Um, the actual headline talks about um, a, a pastor in Nairobi. Uh, I'll, I'll, let me just read the first, first half and, and we'll get to that. A local pastor has ordered all women who attend service at Lord Propeller, Lord's Propeller Redemption Church to refrain from wearing undergarments while attending so that they can more easily receive the spirit of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just... Okay. You know, that that is... <laughs> 
I uh, I can't receive the spirit of Jesus Christ with my underwear on. It prevents Jesus from entering me. What? How do you how do you think Jesus is supposed to enter somebody through through through, through penetration? Really? It's, wow! Jesus Christ came up my vagina because I wasn't wearing my underwear. <laughs> Amen, <laughs> sisters. Oh God! What the fuck? <laughs> And there's a little more. The Kenyan Daily Post is reporting that a pastor identified only as Reverend Njohi, Njohi claimed bras and underwears, underwear are not godly. So it's not just underwear, it's bras too. Additionally, the paper says Naji Njohi wants women who attend service at the church to be free and that there will be consequences for those who do not comply. How is he going to know? How is he going to know? He's going to have to look down everybody's pants or dresses and shirts and stuff to know. Well, if, if if it's in a part of Kenya that would have this, he could just turn, at least check and see if somebody's wearing a bra or not. Turn up the AC really, 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 turn down the AC really, really low. But, and, and even then, that's still a crapshoot because, <laughs> you know, you can still have them poke out through a bra. I've seen it done, so. But this is Kenya. Yeah. We don't know where this is in Kenya because we don't know anything about Kenya, but. Yeah, Okay. Uh, according to the UK Metro, most women did in fact show up at the church located in the eastern suburb of Dandora the following Sunday without any undergarments on under their clothing. Dude, okay, okay, this this is why this just broke me at, at, the, at the start of this. This is why, because this dude has got to be the most desperate motherfucker on the planet. It's like, dude, there is this thing called porn. You can see all of the naked tits and vagina you want. There is no need to manipulate your congregation into exposing themselves or at, at the risk of their salvation, at the risk of, of whatever religious consequences you want to you know you want to foist upon them. You just that there's no need for that. So you're a scumbag, and worse off, you're a desperate scumbag. You are just made of fail, sir. It's just fail. Ugh. All of the fail. All of it. Mm. I needed water for that fail. Uh, now, with all of that gone through, the second half of the article, keep in mind, it's the same headline at the top of the article. The second half of the article reads as follows. <clears throat> Off the coast of Kenya, police in the island nation of Schlegelhofen say autopsies will be performed next week on the bodies of two former U.S. Navy SEALs found dead on a ship. And and for those of you who don't understand where Schlegelhofen is, it's called the Seychelles. Seychelles, thank you. You would know this if you watched Italia. Yes, I would. Uh, but I don't watch Italia, unfortunately. Seychelles, thank you. Okay. But, yeah. But take a look. You know, you know, think of that line, and then think of the story that was that, that I just read to you before that. Keep in mind, same article, same page. What the fuck do, do the two bodies of former U.S. Navy SEALs found down on the ship have to do with, 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 with Reverend Desperate Scumbag? Kenya. And that is literally the only thing these things have in common. Yeah. So so here's the story. Hey, here's a thing going on in Kenya. And here's another completely unrelated thing that's also going on in Kenya. Yeah. Like just make it a different article. Yes. It's it's okay. There are plenty of articles we I've pulled articles for this very show that have had maybe one or two paragraphs. And that's all you need. It gets the information out there. You get the you you get pe people talking about it, getting their opinions out there like we do. There you go. You don't need to cram two unrelated stories into one article, especially when the article only talks about the top one. Well, the, not the article, but the headline, rather. Only talks about the top one. It's really? Really? I mean, it's it's like, uh, as, you know, those Dear Abby pages that you can find. Uh, I, think, I think you find them on Yahoo or whatever. But... They have like several questions from Dear Abby, but the headline is only for I think the top one. It's it's just why do you do that? That is the stupidest thing I have come across. Just so odd. Yes. 
Oh, but for for those who are curious about the rest of the news story, though, uh, of the the you know, autopsy story, I'll 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 read it because you know somebody will be like, well, what happened there? Off well, off the coast of Kenya, uh, Seychelles, um, Seychelles, Seychelles. <laughs> Seychelles. Thank you. I I just do not get it right. Uh, the four two U.S. Navy Navy seals found dead on a ship. Uh, Mayor Skline said in a statement on Thursday that drugs were found in the room of Maserk, Alabama where the two men were found on Tuesday. Maserk, Alabama was the focus of a 2009 hijacking dramatized in the movie Captain Phillips. A statement from the Seychelles police on Friday said that, des that despite the reports of drugs being found, the police never released any reports suggesting that the two Americans may have died from a drug overdose. Police said next week's autopsies are expected to establish the cause of the two deaths. On its own, that's just, that's just okay. We're going to find out what cause these two guys to just die. We don't know why they died, but they're die but they died. We don't know. Um they, they, apparently one of I'm I'm going to guess that one of the prevailing uh things is maybe drugs, you know. Yeah, the police may not think so, but who knows. But yeah, so for any of people who might have been curious how the rest of that story turned out, there you go. <laughs> Oh, so of the last 20 minutes or so of this show, I, I do have some stuff I can pull out of my ass, and, and believe me, it kind of hurts. Oh, so I managed to look up a BuzzFeed article, and I've been holding on to it for a while. And let me ask you, Kat, are you okay. a fan of the Oxford comma? Yes, I love the comma. Yes. I love it too, and every time I see people misuse it on the internet, hello Twitter, hello Tumblr, hello Facebook and Google Plus. Hello looking... everyone everywhere. Yes, I am looking at all of you. So um, this BuzzFeed article is called "The Oxford Comma is Extremely Important and Everyone Should Be Using It." I don't care if it's technically not required. Use the comma. See, when I was growing up, it was required, if I remember correctly. I, right. I, th I think I always had to use it. Yeah. So, I mean, even in this podunk little Graceville town, we had to use the Oxford comma. Although we didn't know it as the Oxford comma at the time. But we still had to use it. Uh, you know, so according to the Oxford Dictionaries, the Oxford comma is an optional comma before the word and at the end of a list. Style experts disagree on whether or not the Oxford comma, also called the serial comma, is required, but that is a stupid argument because clearly you should use it. Look, without the Oxford comma, you're basically forcing the world leaders into exotic dancing. You did this to them. And here is, here is the example they give. With the Oxford comma, we invited the strippers, comma, JFK, comma, and Stalin. Without the Oxford comma, we invited the strippers, comma, JFK and Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> and we Mental see the picture. images you will never unsee. No, <laughs> can't unsee. Titty oh. tassels. On Stalin. <laughs> oh. Okay. Also, do you really want people to think you're talking to your breakfast foods? Well, do you? Well, I talk to my breakfast foods all the time. And, and then I, I, I wring their necks and, and cook them. No, <laughs> I do not live on a chicken farm. Uh, so uh, with the Oxford comma, I had eggs, comma, toast, comma, and orange juice. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a good breakfast. Without, I had eggs, comma, toast, and orange juice. And it's a guy... Literally saying, I had eggs, two, two pieces of toast that are covered with orange juice. Saying, okay. Just, wow. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're talking to toast and orange juice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and without the Oxford comma, you're making Barack Mary Castro. Don't do that to Michelle. She does not deserve that. <laughs> I mean, look at those arms. You think she deserves that? No. Oh, and... This example comes from Sky News, by the way, according, according to this little thing that they have here. Top stories, world leaders at Mandela Tribute, comma, Obama-Castro handshake and same-sex marriage date set. 
note that I didn't put in a comma there. And it's like, wow. Use the Oxford comma, you fuckers. Man, uh, Obama and Castro, though, that's like somebody's crazy or really fucked up fan fiction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and Tim Tebow is not descended from the unholy union of God and the cruel tyrant from Matilda, okay? He just isn't. By the way, that's Miss Trunchbull, who I got to say, on, on a small tangent, I got to say, the, the woman that they cast for the film version, she looks ir- she looks exactly like you would expect her to from the book. Exactly. Oh, having having done both. But anyway, with the Oxford comma, after beating the Steelers, comma, Tim Tebow thanked his parents, comma, God, comma, and Miss Trunchbull. I don't know why Tim Tebow would be thanking her, but okay. <laughs> I realize it's a joke, but. After beating the Steelers, comma, Tim Tebow thanked his parents, comma, God, and Miss Trunchbull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because clearly, after after she was chased off at the end of Matilda, uh, you know, God said, you know what? You're just evil enough. I'm going to spawn in you. And there you go. You will name him Tim, and you will and you will move with him to you know America. I know, I'm just picturing going, with God going, mmm, dead ass. <laughs> I'm going to give me a piece of this trunch bowl. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Also, Miley and J-Law are not puppies. This weird inter- interspecies twerk machine should not exist. I was twerking with the puppies, comma, Miley Cyrus and Jennifer Lawrence. You see why there needs to be a comma. Because who would name their puppies Miley Cyrus or Jennifer Lawrence? Regardless of how you feel about them, why would why why should a why would anybody? I, I would name totally them? name a puppy Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jennifer Lawrence. Well, yeah. Oh God, <laughs> and twerking puppies. I don't know. Maybe cute. I don't know. Well, in the picture that they have in this BuzzFeed article, they photoshopped Miley and and Jennifer Lawrence's faces over the same picture of a corgi. <laughs> it's pretty cute, except for their faces being on the dog. Yeah, and whoever did the one for Miley, um, they could well, okay, they could do a better job on both of them, honestly. But yeah, I they're don't... horrible. They're yeah. they're purposely horrible photoshopping. Yeah, that was gonna be my my guess. And are you really going to call Nelson Mandela an 800-year-old dildo collector? Nelson Mandela. Uh, let's see. A direct quote from the Times newspaper talking about a Peter Ustinov documentary and saying that <clears throat> highlights of his global tour include encounters with Nelson Mandela, comma, an 800-year-old demigod, and a dildo collector. <laughs> 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 See now I'm just picturing Nelson Mandela in like Asgard. <laughs> Nelson Mandela's like his quarters in Asgard Ugh, with all the other demigods and gods and shit, and he's just there with like this room full of dildos. Eight hundred years worth of dildos. We got the first dildo here that that's made of uh elephant tusk here. Yeah. No. Well, that's the first one there. Women didn't like that, so I, I tried using wood, and, and, and uh, well, they, they came to me complaining that, um, well, that wasn't the kind of wood that they were wanting in their vaginas. And so <laughs> we finally settled on we, we settled on this, this more metallic thing. That, that seemed to be okay for them for a little while, although in the winter, they, they kind of got stuck up in there every now and then. And then we finally, we finally discovered plastic and, and, and silicone, and then that seems to do the trick. Although they need to have a little bit of extra outside lubrication, but that's okay. That's a small price to pay. Oh, and that just came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Also, let's be clear that Vampire Weekend was being extremely cavalier about the Oxford comma thing because plenty of people give a fuck about an Oxford comma. Oh, three tweets. First one reads, I give a fuck about an Oxford comma Vampire Weekend. The second one, who gives a fuck about an Oxford comma, you ask? Vampire Weekend? I give a fuck about an Oxford comma. A photo, I give a fuck about an Oxford comma, comma, Vampire Weekend. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, this guy said he didn't care about the Oxford comma on his dating profile and totally ruined any chance he had of a relationship because it's that important. And then from the screen cap, this is from OK Cupid. Uh, from this this guy asking, "Will you pet sit my fish?" And the response is, "Yes, but I'm a firm proponent of the Oxford comma, so I don't think it'll work out between us." Uh, and the response, "Maybe you could beat me into submitting to the Oxford comma." Nope, not my thing. Good day. <laughs> uh, what? And you how, beat me into submitting to the Oxford comma? It is not something you submit to, you dipshit. <laughs> Do or do not, there is no speeding into submission. Yes. You just do it. You learn it, and you do it, and you practice it. You, it does not get beaten. In, it is, no, you don't submit to it. And what I found interesting is this guy, these two apparently were supposed to be a 75% match, 85, 84% friend. Mm. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You, apparently he falls into that 4% of people that, that this, I'm assuming, girl. Would 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 say that yeah these people they don't use the Oxford comma, so they they fall into this four percent enemy here. So just remember next time you're wondering if you if if you should use the Oxford comma, yes, it is important comma amazing comma and vital period. <laughs> so yes, I I got to, I got to have a little fun with that, and um, if you're not using the Oxford comma out there. Why the fuck not? I mean, and then that's one of the things I've, you know, over the years being on the internet, talking to people, and saying, well, well, you know, you could grammar up a little bit better. Well, why? I'm not in school. I've had a cousin tell me, whenever I would correct her grammar, she'd be like, I don't give a shit. I'm not in school. I'm like, no, you go to school to learn how to talk like you, like you belong at the current century, not like you belong back in the Stone Age. That's why you go to school. And learn these things. That's why you learn things like the Oxford comma. So you don't sit around sounding or reading like you're some kind of guy that sits around in his underwear and drools all day. You know, you, you, that's, that's why this stuff is out there. So you can sound more intelligent. So you can sound more concise. Which is so, something sometimes... So you can not sound like a fucking idiot when you go get a real person job and you're expected to sound like a normal human being who speaks English. Yes. I mean, even McDonald's. I don't even think McDonald's would want to hire somebody who can't speak proper English because you they kind of need that to be able to communicate back there. You know, I mean, the, the stereotype of somebody working at McDonald's and talking like this all the time. No, that does that does not work because if they're talking like this all the time, then you can't understand what they're saying. And thus, you know. They need to get the order to the back there, or there's some communication that needs to go on in the back, and they can't do it because, well, they can't understand what the fuck you're saying. I mean, okay, granted, they have computers and everything, so still. Ah, uh, wow. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Mm. So that is, that is that list, and I am tempted to click on one of the other ones, but they all would not take... They they would they we do not have time for a lot of those that are there unfortunately oh so um with the way I ramble we'll, we'll go ahead and start wrapping up and getting out of here um thank you guys for listening and watching if you're watching it on the uh, YouTube links and YouTube video stuffs and everything um if you want to find me on the social medias you can find me on Twitter at Gomer two one double X and yes I am on Tumblr now same name Gomer two one double X and, of course, my shows and my site do have their own Tumblr blogs as well. I'll, I'll try and keep up with those as much as possible. Um, well, th at least the site updates to the Tumblr automatically, so it's no big deal there. Uh, you can also find my stuff on nerdvice.com as well as rtgomer.com, which is my main site, which you can find all sorts of neat little shows and, and, and really great personalities such as Writer's Block, who does comic book reviews, Diamanda Hagen, which if you're listening to this, you might know who she is already. But uh, if you don't, just go and watch her. Just do not start with Chirpy. Just, just do not let Chirpy be your starting point with Hagen because you will never look back. And this is coming from a guy who has seen Chirpy outside of a review. Yeah, that, that was a thing. <clears throat> and, oh, yeah. And, of course, 
on, on, on my site as well, uh, there is a link that leads you to my Patreon page, which it's basically me saying, yeah, th- I, I need help monetarily, especially since, like I kind of complained about earlier in the show, not I'm having a hard time getting a day job, and this is what I love to do, this and the Let's Plays and the videos and everything, and why not find a way to be able to earn money while doing it? Well, one way to do it is through Patreon. And if if you're a patron like 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 myself, I can get on there, and you you put up your thing, say what your shows are about or what have you. You can put up rewards and goals and everything. And if people want to, you know, they can actually patronize you. You know, send you money on a whatever basis. Mine is set up for monthly. And right now I have it to where if you if you can pledge, uh, I think it's twenty dollars or more per month, you get advertising space on my site. That's you know, it's actually a lot cheaper than most most other sites can do it. So it's it's a pretty good bargain. And of course, the money will go towards other productions, etc., etc., etc. As well as you know, keeping me afloat all all the way around. Um, so when you when you when you actually uh, patronize me on Patreon, it's not just me; it's also my site, uh, which also again has other shows such as Lost in the Static, Radio Jerome, and What the Fuck, which we have over from the Twelve One Beyond crowd, which by the way, isn't there somebody that's also on What the Fuck? Oh yeah, Cat. Oh that's me. Yes. So where else can we find you? Um other than on What the Fuck, which is uh on airs on Saturday nights on uh on Jackalope Radio. Um I'm also over on Twitter at Labyrinth Cat, and you can find me on Facebook um, if you search for Nerdist Cat. And I'm also over at That Guy with the Glasses under the podcast tab. My other show is Nerd to the Third Power. Yes, and didn't you guys do the Golden Bacon Awards recently? Yes, we actually just got the Golden Bacon. I, there are a thousand and one horrible explanations of why it took so long, but uh, basically the Golden Bacon Awards are up now. Um, and it is amazing, so you should definitely check it out because we worked really, really hard on it. Yes, and and again, you know, you know, for for all of the sites that 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 we're part of, you know, Nerdvice, my site, uh, that guy with the glasses, go and check out other people. You know, check out the people that maybe you don't get to check out very often. Like on my site, for example, I'm I'm going I'm going to say you know check out Writer's Block series. I actually had a cameo in one of his more recent videos. Check out Spaz Fox's series because he does his uh, let's plays of of like Portal Two, uh, Half Life Two. I I think it's Half Life Two. Um, Fallout Three. I think he's still doing. You know he he does a good job there. He's really funny to listen to. Uh, on Nerdvice, I I just want to say go list go watch Lady Spaz's series on there, and of course on That Guy with the Glasses. Um, anybody who's not on the front page, go go and patronize them a little bit, <laughs> um, you know, or or at least not, not at the top of the front page. So you know, because give the give the lesser guys a little bit more love, uh, and I and I realize Lady Spaz isn't much of a lesser person, but but you know, uh Anyway, with that bit of awkwardness, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Again, thank you guys for listening. We hope to catch you next time, which should be next week if life doesn't happen. Ugh. You mean if we all die? Well, if we all die, then, of course, there's not going to be a show, unfortunately. Uh, there ghost won't be any shows. show, ghost show. We're going to come back as ghosts. That would be so awesome. We would have, like, ghost podcasts, and other ghosts could listen to our podcasts. Oh, yes. Doing the podcast thing in the afterlife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, living people would be able to hear it if they just listened closely with, like, EMF and, and like, special microphones and shit. Yes. They'd be like, what are you trying to tell us? And we'd be like, and then this guy in Florida. Yes. <laughs> We would make people take a shot and everybody else around them would wonder why, like, wait, what, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yes, we will catch you guys next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.